One Piece chapter 985 had the entire fan base shook and it was because of one moment really and we all know what that moment was. It was Yamato essentially asking Luffy to join the crew. Okay, maybe Orochi getting his head lobbed off by Kaido was a bigger moment, so I guess we could talk about that for this video, but Yamato for Straw Hat, definitely. Now the biggest thing with Orochi's death is the question of, is he actually dead? And I put up a poll in my community tab and the majority of you do not think he's dead. And honestly, anybody who watched my live reaction to One Piece 985, initially I was shook by the moment and I thought he was dead pretty much the entire live stream. I was like, okay, Orochi has to be dead. And you can't blame me because essentially he got his head cut off by maybe the strongest pirate in the One Piece world right now. And if this was any other story, I think the majority of people would think Orochi is dead, but this is One Piece. And after having some time to think about it, I don't think Orochi is dead for numerous reasons. And the first reason is that this is One Piece and this is Oda's story. And we all know Oda is soft when it comes to death. You guys already know the Willow P, Pell, Pagaya, Pound. Oda doesn't kill people very often. Now you might be saying he does kill people when it's impactful, like the Going Mary or Ace. And I could see Oda making a statement here with Orochi's death. It was very impactful and did make the chapter very hot and kind of change the tone of this entire arc and war. But the big thing for me is Orochi's character and what his role has been in the story. Like killing him now would be a statement, but ultimately I think it would be kind of disappointing for his character. Now let me just start off by saying Orochi's character as a whole was kind of a disappointment. Like when we first got introduced to the story of Wano on Zo, we found out about Kozuki Odin, this great samurai who sailed with the Roger Pirates and how he was super strong, but ultimately he got defeated by Kaido and the Shogun of Wano. So we were speculating that Shogun, who was teaming up with Kaido, one of the strongest pirates in the world, if not the strongest, to be this like very fearsome, intimidating, strong character, potentially like a very threatening opponent, maybe a potential fighting opponent for Zoro. But when Orochi finally gets revealed, Underwhelming would be an underwhelming way to put it. Like who expected the Shogun of Wano to be this short fat man with a big ass head? And honestly, Tekking's voice of, oh, my name is Lord Orochi. It's just, it just fits that character perfectly because he's like this old, big, whiny man baby. And yeah, Orochi's not a likable character. So you might be saying, aren't I glad just like he's dead and been killed off of the story? And like, yes and no, because like, yes, I think he should be dead, but this is not the the right way to do it. There needs to be a better way for him to die. And furthermore, as we learn more about Orochi beyond his weird ass appearance, we learn more about his history and there's a lot of different story elements tied to his character. So let's break down Orochi's past and all the different elements that are tied to his story. One of which is his bloodline, the Kurozumi bloodline, because no matter how much we hate people like Kondro and Orochi, what happened to them is pretty messed up. Their entire family line was essentially hunted and killed as sport just because of what one of their ancestors did. That's a pretty messed up thing that happened to them and I feel like that could be expanded more upon. Like it was briefly mentioned with Orochi and Kondro, but I feel like they could give their perspective a little more to help us understand their character. And furthermore, this has to get resolved in the future. Like Momonosuke as the Shogun has to also recognize the Korizumis as a whole. The reason you had Orochi and Kondro, these two people who went to such terrible lengths to like betray their friends and like destroy the country of Wano. They were created because of this bad aspect of Wano where like the Kurozumis were being hunted down. So Momonosuke has to learn about that and like really recognize that was a big problem and like outlaw that and make sure that doesn't happen again in the future. I'm also very curious in Kurozumi Senimaru and Kurozumi Higarashi, old hag and the old man who were like essentially the masterminds in, in a way because they really fed Orochi that information information of like how he's going to become the Shogun and how he must seek revenge. They also set everything up. They gave Orochi his devil fruit, maybe got him in contact with Kaido. We need more backstory on like how that relationship came to be in the first place. It seemed like they were also the ones that gave Kondro his devil fruit. So like where did they get all these like crazy devil fruits from and like what was their plan all along? They both are dead in the story right now so they can't explain the situation. Like we know that the old hag got killed off by 
by Kaido after interfering with the battle of Odin and Kaido. The old man never gets mentioned as being killed, but we know that Bartolomeo has his devil fruit, so he definitely must be dead. So those two aren't gonna reappear in the story to be explained, so I feel like Orochi is like the only person that could explain that perspective of what kind of information they fed him and how they really raised him to get to that shogun position. There's also a scene where the old hag switches faces and turns into a face that looks very similar to Shiki, so like that could get tied in with like the Rocks Pirates and maybe that's how the Kaido relationship got started. There's a lot of information that we did not get in the Odin flashback about Orochi. We got little glimpses of his rise and like how he was stealing money and the old hag like kind of setting him up, but his whole plan and like what his grand plan is, we need to know more of. Is it really just to destroy Wano as a whole and like this whole time he was just like, oh I'm gonna just like, you know, wait, turn Wano into a wasteland and after that I'll die happy. I feel like there's more to it and that's the other thing is Orochi is a schemer, okay? He like doesn't seem very strong. He's always afraid of dying. Like when Zoro attacked him, he was deathly terrified. He probably sharded a little bit, but he gets by with his devious plans. Maybe those like that he inherited from those two old uh, Kurizumis but like he knows what he's doing and he's had all these little side plots that he was kind of doing. He was making deals with the CP0, getting battleships, and then he was talking about wanting Vegapunk. What is that all about? And like, don't forget, he was like really the person making the deals. Like he was running the flower capital. That was all his domain. I'm sure he had some things set up. And I mentioned this in my chapter review. Like I don't imagine Orochi to be so dumb that he knows like Kaido could just one shot him easily and he would have like no backup plans for that and he just waiting to the day that Kaido gets sick of him essentially. And Orochi and Kaido's relationship, that's another thing I want to see more of because it was always confusing to me why those two were like kind of seen on equal footing. That's one of the reasons I kind of expected a betrayal from one of them. I just didn't expect Kaido to just decapitate Orochi last chapter. And let's not forget all the people that has vengeance against Orochi, like the Scabbers, that whole storyline has been built up, how Orochi is deathly terrified of the Scabbers coming back. Also, Zoro kind of has like a vendetta against Orochi because of the whole Yasuye thing. And of course, Momonosuke and Hiori and a bunch of people also want to kill Orochi. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But right now, let's talk about how he could possibly still be alive. One of the popular theories and something I mentioned in my chapter review is that Kondro drawing a portrait or a painting of Orochi that Kaido killed. Now, if you compare Orochi's decapitation to Kondro's decapitation by Kinemon, the panels being showcased are kind of similar. You have the decapitation that happens then the head that falls off with the expression and then you see the body and the head separated. So maybe that's a foreshadowing that it is a painting, but I will note Orochi's scene definitely has more blood involved. Also, another thing to note is that Kondro's body essentially dissipates pretty quickly afterwards, and we don't really have enough information to see what happened to Orochi's body because Luffy and like, Yamato fall down from the stairs and they start screaming at Kaido and it's all just chaos now. So we caught away from Orochi and we don't really know what happened to his body. So Kondro's painting could definitely be an option, but I really like the idea of his devil fruit playing a role even more because we saw that devil fruit for a reason, right? And this is a mythical zone, the Yamato no Orochi. Don't get it confused with a Hydra, which is like cut off one head, another three grows. It's not that. The Yamata no Orochi is of Japanese mythology. It's an eight headed snake serpent dragon thing that also has like eight tails. But the main thing is those eight heads. You have to kill all eight heads in order to kill that dragon. So now you have something that makes a lot of sense. A decapitation, maybe you're just cutting off one of the heads. Now you might be thinking, and I even said this in my chapter review, like Orochi was in his human form so like how does that make sense but one of my viewers pointed out that Marco was in human form and used his phoenix powers when he was talking to Nekamamushi so it's very clear that you could use your zone powers to some extent while you're still in your human form so I don't really know how it will work like appearance wise like the more does he just grow another head and is that like he has seven lives now that could definitely be the way to do it and I think that's the best option because first of all I like the idea that it bumps the like the myth zones a little more because now you have somebody like even Orochi who's this big headed scaredy cat. I use that term because I want to get demonetized but yeah even somebody like Orochi could tank a hit 
from Kaido because he has such a strong mythical zone fruit. That's a great way to kind of power balance hockey and like devil fruits because once hockey got introduced, we were like, okay, then Logias aren't really that great because now you could just have hockey and Logias are you just getting bodied anyway. But then later on, you learn a little more about observation hockey, how you could tag team that. But like this would just power up devil fruits by itself. Like you have a really powerful devil fruits, even Kaido with hockey, you could tank a few hits. And the idea of Orochi having eight lives, I really like that idea. So like eight lives in total, now he has seven left. Now he has seven more ways to die. And that's gonna be very fitting because one of the biggest question was always like, who's gonna kill Orochi? So many people wanna kill him. Well, like everybody could kill him now. Like, let's count this out now. He has seven lives left. Let's say Kaido took one of them. Uh, Hiori could be one of them because she said she wants to kill him. Momonosuke killing Orochi, kind of Shogun killing the other, like, bad Shogun, that would be very poetic. Zoro also wants to kill Orochi, so there's another one. I feel like Kinemon would be very fitting as well, so now we're at four. Uh, Kiyoshiro and Denjiro, after suffering all that rage of, like, serving under uh, Orochi, that would be a very fitting one. Okay, so now we got two left, and, like, why not just have, like, all the scabbers and samurai just team up on Orochi and just slice him until he has no heads or lives left. Like, I feel like that would be very fitting. Maybe, like, he has one life left and they just throw him to the, like, people of the flower capital or, like, Ibisu town or Curry. Like, all these people that he like fed small devil fruits too they could just go at it and just kill him off so now you're taking orochi's great power which allowed him to tank a hit from kaido but now making him suffer seven times more that would be very fitting in my opinion now one of the problems is that like people will mention kaido has been allies with orochi for like 20 plus years how would he not know about the power of that zone devil fruit especially he's somebody who's very interested in zones going as far to like produce them and in my chapter review i mentioned like the possibility of Rochi just hiding this being very secretive and scheming but it is possible that Kaido knows but he just did that to Rochi to make a statement like look I know you're not dead you have seven lives left but like I'm gonna kill you I don't care about you I could take those seven lives easily okay but I'm just showcasing this to show like your people they need to choose if they want to be with me or I'm gonna kill them just like I'm gonna do to you seven more times and I have a lot of theories on what's gonna happen next of like where Kaido and Big Mom might go and how they could possibly be defeated and how Wano could end. I'm starting to develop some predictions, but that will probably be another video. We have to address the case that if Orochi does die, because at the very least, right now, everybody thinks he's dead, right? So like, even if he's not dead, the impact of his death, we're gonna see initially at least a little bit. And the first thing that comes into play is Kaido giving Orochi's Ben a choice. They have five seconds to decide if they want to be with them or be like killed pretty much. And I'm really wondering, like what's Kaido gonna do? Like, how's he gonna decide and separate who wants to join them and stuff? Like, is he gonna be like, okay, uh, raise your hand if you wanna stay with the Beast Pirates, okay? You got your hand raised? All right, all right, King. Go kill everybody who doesn't have their hand raised. Like, how how does that work? Especially with all the chaos going on, like, Orochi's death is gonna send this alliance, this Kaido's big great force of initially 30,000 people. It's definitely gonna dwindle that down. And the samurai's decision, uh, the, the Orochi samurai, their decision is gonna be very telling, in my opinion. I'm very curious, like, what kind of people these are. Did they follow Orochi just because they had given up and like just decided to follow Orochi for the benefits. I feel like some of them could be like that, but like what about like the Mima Warigumi? Like one of those members we actually see like reacting to like what Kaido is saying. Like are they also just like lap dogs of Orochi and decided to follow him and like they were just bad people as well? Uh, one idea I did think about is like what if they are also Kurizumis? Like there could have been more Kurizumis besides Kanjuro and Orochi and that could be a way of like tying it all together of like at the end of Wano, like maybe now, they decide, okay, like Wano is still our country. Um, no matter how much we hate the people of Wano for like persecuting our family and all that, we're gonna fight for the country. And that could be a way to like dwindle Kaido's side down a little bit. And also tie back the Korozumi thing with Wano. And like at the end of Wano, that could get resolved with Momonosuke saying, look, we can't like fault one, like an entire family for what one person did. Like the persecution, the Kurizumis must stop. But even if like those guys aren't the Kurizumis, I'm interested to see what kind of people they are. Like the 10,000 of them that decided to serve Orochi. Are they all of a sudden gonna like show off their samurai pride and decide to defend Wano? I'm sure some of them will be 
be like, oh my god, okay, no, Kaido? Yeah, no, I'm gonna be with you. But some of them, I feel like, could, like, man up, be like, no, 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 no. I was serving Orochi, you killed him, I'm gonna fight for my country. And I'm really curious how many people decide to go with Kaido, which I'm sure at least a few will, but what if, like, the entire 10,000 people decide to fight for, like, Wano? Now you're talking 15,000 people against 20,000 people. Another person in my comments pointed out something very interesting. If you just add the Grand Fleet's 5,000 to that 15,000, now you have an even battle. I'm not banking on that happening because it's kind of headcanon-ish of just, like, a numbers game. But that would be, a, like, a dope way to do it. But either way, Orochi supposedly being dead definitely hurts Kaido's side. I also wonder what Kondro's reaction is. I might, and one of the things I mentioned in my chapter review is like Kiku hurting Kondro might been like Kondro getting distracted by the announcement and hearing like Lord Orochi is dead and he just like shook and then Kiku cuts him. That could have been a way to do it. But like, I don't think Kondro is dead and like what happens to him now? Because I feel like those two definitely had like a very close relationship and kept information from Kaido. Does Kondro become like a temporary ally? I don't think he's gonna like get redeemed or anything, but like he could be fighting for the samurai side a little bit. Maybe we even see him fight a Toby Ropo for a little bit. Or like Orochi is still alive, but he's like trying to escape in the midst of chaos, and Kondro is really like his only real ally there. And those two, we see them team up, and then they're kind of like going through Onigashima and like meeting up with other people in potential battles. And yet, there's definitely a lot of chaos and a lot of potential fights that could be happening soon, but I'm gonna save that for another video. But with Orochi's death, I think right now it's gonna hurt Kaido's side. I do think he's still alive probably because of his devil fruits and I think um, he, it's just too early for him to die. There's a lot of storylines tied to him. But what do you guys think? Do you think Orochi's actually dead? If you do think he's dead, tell me why. If you don't think he's dead, tell me why as well. And like where you think his story goes and give me your reasons down in the comments below. But as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please hit that like button. It helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to keep up to date with when I'm doing new videos or live streams, you got to hit that subscribe button. By the time this video goes up, I'm uh, probably close to 2,300 subscribers still climbing steadily along. So welcome to all the new subscribers. Thank you all who have been subscribed and supporting me for a long time. Let's keep it rolling. Our next big goal is at 5k and remember discord at 5k. So help us get there. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to join the crew as well. Follow me on Twitter. I'm DKing4 and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.